Hello everyone, this is Amr Asker in Orthontic Talks. Today I have an interesting case. The case came to our clinic with large overjet. And it seems like the lower incisor touching the balcony because of the upper incisors. And here we can found that the patient has like overjet, about 12 mm overjet. And almost here we have the lower incisors covered by the upper incisors, about the half of the lower incisors. From the profile view, the patient has incompetent lips due to the larger overjet, which is a common sign of class 2 cases. And almost here the upper incisor is displayed during without smiling. And here in the right side and left side, the patient has class 2 molar relation and that's the E of the sequence or primary teeth. The large overjet here also is obvious. And here is the smiling foot of the patient. The upper teeth and the upper jaw seem like flared outside the patient teeth. And here also we have a gum smile. After requesting panoramic x-ray and spirometric x-ray to, to be sure from our diagnosis, from spirometric x-ray, the patient has SMA about 85. And 85 means almost large maxilla or maxillary broken system. And the SAB is like 75. That means the patient has little bit mandibular deficiency. And about the upper central lung axis, like 106 degrees. And about the lower central lung axis, like 92. And these four angles are very important in any orthotic cases. The first two angles is about skeletal, and the other two angles is about dental. So from these four angles, we can differentiate the case is it skeletal class 2 or dental class 2 or both dental and skeletal class 2. And here in panoramic x ray, the patient in the late mixed dentition stage and the CDE roots start to absorb it completely, maybe. And the upper incisors, apex, start to be closed. So, what's the treatment plan for that case? Can we go for extraction for the upper premolars after its eruption and then retracting the upper incisors? Or to do appliance to accelerate mandibular growth? Or to do appliance to stop maxillary growth? From these angles, we have almost strong SNA angle and almost strong SNB angle, and the upper central and lower central is slide in the normal. And from CVM or cervical vertebrae stage, the CVM stage lies between stage 2 and stage 3. And from the cervical vertebrae, we can know that stage of growth for that girl. So now, the treatment plan will be in two phases. The first phase for skeletal management. We will start for growth modification and I will do two appliances together. The first appliance to retard the maxillary growth and the other appliance will be for the mandible to accelerate mandibular growth. So the first appliance will be head gear. The head gear to stop or retard the maxillary growth. And the other appliance at the same time will be mandibular accelerator. It's like jumping appliance and I will choose activator, any type of activator. You can choose monoblock, you can choose twin block, or any type of activator. And it will take like 9 months to 1 year. After that, we will go for the second phase. And the second phase, I will do for phases to like interdigitation after the first phase almost will be finished. So the first one is growth modification by hip gear and activator, hip gear for the maxilla, activator for the mandible. And the second phase will be dental treatment after complete eruption of all permanent distance type about after one year. So how to fabricate activator and how to take the edge to edge bite like you know to fabricate activator, you need edge to edge bite for the patient. It's called future bite. How to take ideal edge to edge bite? I fabricated Asker bite. You can use Asker bite to take ideal bite in edge to edge relation easily 
with least amount of midline shifting during taking the bite. So the Askwood bite from the other side have centimeters, okay? So you can measure the overjet before starting the case. So now I will put wax in the upper side and in the lower side and you will put it on the upper incisors and guide the patient to move the mandible forward and close here in the lower part of the appliance or in the bite. So that's Asper bite and you can, you can call it online. So here is the position of the upper incisor, here is the position of the lower incisors. And that's after taking the pipe by wax or you can use pipe registration material, any type of pipe registration material. That's enter oil during taking the pipe and here is the try end before pipe taking and for putting the wax. In this video, you can see step by step how to take the bite. The upper side and lower side, and that's other patient while I was taking the bite for him. Here also the patient has large object and we need to take the bite. So you can measure the bite by the ruler in the other side of master bite. You can put it vertical during taking the bite. And now it's dry in time. So you will put the bite on the upper arch and ask the patient to protrude the mandible and close with the lower groove. And repeat that several times till the patient can understand when and how to bite. After that, you can start to soften the wax and put it on the right side and on the left side. And after complete softening, ask the patient to repeat the bite again. Just roll wax on the right and on the left. After softening, put the aspirin pipe on the upper arch and ask your patient to protrude and to close on the lower part. And now it's time to make adaptation for the wax, okay? To be ideally adapted on the buckle side of the teeth on the right and on the left. And almost take like 30 seconds and you can remove aspirin pipe and wash by water and then send it for the lab with the upper and lower scan or upper and lower impression. The lab fabricate activator and I choose in that case activator type which is monoblock so that's the monoblock for the patient and I ask the lab to fabricate the monoblock with two tubes because I will put the heat gear in the tubes which part of heat gear it's faithful so I will insert the faithful on that hole and I will insert the other face bow or the left side of the face bow in the second bow. So activator and two tubes right and left for the right side and for the left side. Short media for tension. Ask the patient to protrude the mandible and close in the activator. Repeat it several times. Okay. And that's the head gear. And you should adjust the head gear to exert like 450 grams for every side. So you can use force gauge, or from my experience, you can put it passive and just decrease the hole number two holes on the right side and two holes for the left side. So adjusting the head gear, that one in the middle of the face and that one in the middle of the back of the face, and fabricating the head gear and ask the patient to activate it on the selected hole and just make mark for the patient so he can put the head gear module easily in that hole. For the patient, every one month, check the appliance, check the fitting, and also you can check the progress of the appliance and the progress of the overjet correction. Almost one to two millimeter per month cor correction will be expecting from that appliance. It took for like eight months. After eight months, the overjet was almost correct completely 
and the patient has here just two millimeter overgen. And the deep bite also corrected and start rupture of the other permanent teeth. And here is the occlusion after complete rupture of the upper canine, almost class one canine for both sides. And almost class one molar relation or quarter unit class three molar relation, slight over correction of the appliance. And also for the premolar, slight over correction of the appliance. And now we are waiting the complete eruption of the other teeth and we will check the case for dental treatment and to correct the midline. So your cane C will be removed. Okay. What about the profile and the smile of the patient? There is huge change in color. Here is a smile before and smile after. And eight months. And then for the profile, the patient can close Compton flaps, the upper teeth completely covered by the upper lip and lower lip. The profile will start to be like straight profile. And that's the smile for the patient. There is almost normal overjet. That's like 12 millimeter overjet. And now we have almost two millimeter overjet after finishing the case. So the success of activator and hip gear depends completely on selection of the appliance and also on the patient compliance. Just create the compliance for the patient. Ask him to read it. Because by these two appliances, we can prevent the need for orthognathic surgery later on, in most of cases. And now, after complete rupture of the overjet, we will start dental treatment to just correct the midline and to close any residual spaces. Stay tuned for more videos and for complete growth modification appliances I invite you for the Dubai course, the Dubai module. We will speak about orthotic and pediatric dentistry, all the appliances for growth modification, class two like that case, and also for class three. And it's not only for growth modification, all the appliances and relation between orthotics and pediatric dentistry in two interesting fields. Stay tuned and see you again. Bye bye.